This hearing will come to order. Good morning. In 1890, the superintendent of the census declared the end to the American frontier by stating, quote, up to and including 1880, the country had a frontier of settlement, but at present the unsettled area has been so broken into isolated bodies of settlement that there can hardly be said to be a frontier line. In the discussion of its extent, its westward movement, etc., it cannot, therefore, any longer have a place in the census reports. The American vision of westward expansion that had been initiated 86 years earlier through the Lewis and Clark expedition had been successful in leading to the expansion of American commerce and settlement in a new territory that had not previously been charted by American pioneers. Today, this committee embarks on a series of hearings looking at reopening the American frontier with our sights set on the heavens, which President Kennedy referred to as the new frontier. It is only fitting that the nation born on the last frontier should continue to lead the way in the new frontier. America must expand commerce and ultimately settlement into space, and we must do it first. This is an issue that not only impacts our global competitiveness, but also our national security. The world is much safer with America as the global leader on this planet, and the world will similarly be safer and stronger if the United States and our ideals of free enterprise and free speech are the driving force of commerce and settlement throughout the galaxy. For nearly 60 years, NASA has granted the United States access to space and has made human spaceflight a reality. In recent years, commercial space companies have made enormous strides in technological advancement and the scope of their business activities that are leading to a new and dynamic renaissance in spaceflight. This is creating the real possibility that in the not too distant future, American private citizens will be able to reach space, hopefully from a launch pad or runway in the great state of Texas. However, to ensure that this remains within the realm of the possible, Congress needs to continue to work to ensure that investment and innovation within the commercial space sector isn't chilled by obsolete regulations or overly burdensome requirements that may not naturally apply to new business models. As we look to the future of American free enterprise and settlement in space, we should also thoroughly review the United Nations Outer Space Treaty which was written and enacted in a very different time and era in 1967. It's important that Congress evaluate how that treaty, enacted 50 years ago, will impact new and innovative activity within space as well as potential settlement throughout the galaxy. Finally, we would be remiss if this committee did not also explore ways that the Commercial Space Center Academia and NASA can look to build upon current partnerships and create new ones that can advance human spaceflight, research, and discovery. As we embark together on this series of hearings and potential legislation, I look forward to continuing to work in the same strong bipartisan manner that this subcommittee has always worked, working with Chairman Thune, with Ranking Member Nelson, with our subcommittee's previous ranking member, <clears throat> Senator Peters. And also, I want to uh, welcome the new ranking member of this committee, Senator Markey. Welcome to this committee. I will say at a time of significant partisan division on a great many issues, this subcommittee has been remarkable, now under a Democratic Senate and a Republican Senate, for being able to produce bipartisan legislation. And we have produced not one but two bills in the last couple of years, the Commercial Space Launch Competitiveness Act, which was signed into law by President Obama, and the NASA authorization legislation, which was signed into law by President Trump. 
In both instances, this committee was able to work together across party lines to achieve consensus and to move the ball forward. And I look forward to our working together to continue to do so and to continue working on new legislation to nurture, to create, and to expand a vibrant commercial space sector and a strong NASA so that America continues to lead the world in space exploration. And with that, I'll recognize Ranking Member Nelson for an opening statement. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman.